Okay guys, first off, obviously you gotta pick the car up off the ground and get it on some jack stands. Uh, then, once you do that, you gotta get the tire off. Uh, Leighton's doing a good job of pulling the lug nuts off and getting the, getting the tire off. Now once you get both tires off, um, these brake drums are gonna be exposed. You need to get those off as well. They might be stuck a little bit, but if you give them a good tap, they ought to come off. Um, there's gonna be some junk in there. Try not to get it on you because it does mark up everything. Now once you get the brake drums off, the axle is exposed. Now this axle is held in here by this flange. It's got four studs sticking through with nuts on it. And they're locking nuts. You can reach all of them by the access hole in the flange of the axle. So if you just reach through like I did with your socket, you should be able to get to them and take them all off. And once you get all the nuts off, you can pull the axle out. The axle doesn't have C-clips or anything like that in a forward 8 inch, so it'll just slide out of there. You gotta give it a little tug because it's a bearing fit, but once you pull on it, it should come out. Now once you get both axles out of the rear end, it's time to pull the drive shaft and try to get the carrier out or the center section. Um, to do this, you undo the nuts on the back side of the U-bolt and pull your U-bolts out and then give the drive shaft a tug and it should come out of the yoke. And once you get the drive shaft out, now it's time to undo the bolts on the flange of the center section. I would advise undoing them all just a little bit and putting a drain pan under it and getting a screwdriver in there and cracking it a little on the bottom and letting that oil pour out because it's going to go everywhere when you try to pull the carrier out. Once you get the nuts off and get everything cracked loose, you can grab the center section and pull it out. Um, now it is pretty heavy, so beware of that. It's about yeah, probably 50 pounds, uh, but one person should be able to pull it out. Now here we've already got the carrier out and we've got it outside the car. Now what holds the spool part in to the carrier is these four bolts that hold the main caps on. Um, once you untorque those and get all four of those out, you should be able to um, tap it a little bit and take these center bolts out that hold the little keepers. You gotta take those out or it'll hang up. Once you take all that stuff out, you ought to be able to tap the main caps and the spool will come out of the center section. Now, when you start pulling the spool out of the center section, you need to keep everything where it goes. Keep the main caps for which side they go on. Keep those um, adjustment flanges, I guess you can call them. Keep them on the side that they go. And most importantly, keep the bearing races, the outer races, to the bearing that they go to. Now on ours, we changed the whole center section because mine was messed up, so we had to put new bearings on it, but if you were just replacing spider gears or putting a mini spool in or something like that or changing gear ratios, you would need to keep those races with the bearing unless you change the bearings. Now once you get the bolts out of the ring gear, you can wedge it apart. Um, ours was on there especially hard because the spool messed up and the, the cross pin was wedged under the ring gear but we managed to manage to get some screwdrivers in there and get the ring gear off once you get it moving you can stand it up like we did here and give it a couple of love taps and it'll come off of there pretty easy um, at this point you have your uh, spool part the part that holds the spider gears and it comes off in two pieces as well it's not very difficult to get them apart. You just drive a screwdriver in just like the ring gear and pop them apart. Once you get them apart you have access to the ring gear, I mean to the spider gears or anything else. Now here you can see what messed up with ours. 
This is the cross pin that goes through the spider gears and it evidently spun. There's a pin that's supposed to go through that hole and attach right there where I'm pointing. And that pin is supposed to keep this, this cross bar from moving, but apparently something messed up in there and it sheared off. Okay, so now I'm putting my original ring gear, which is a 3 to 1 gear ratio, on a new spool that I got from another 4 to 8 inch that I had. Um, this takes a while if you don't have a bench or an impact because you have to go around and pull every one up just a little bit at a time and slowly pull that ring gear onto that spool. But I wanted to show this because this is the fix. This is what I did. I got another center section. I cleaned it up, made sure it didn't have anything in it, uh, made sure it was good, put my old ring gear on it, and that's how we got the Cougar back running. Okay, once you get everything installed in the center section, it's time to set the backlash. As you can see now, the way we got this set up, you got a dial indicator on the edge of the ring gear, and you can move it back and forth with the pinion filed and see how much backlash there is. Uh, that current setup had about four thousandths. Now I'm going to turn these adjustment rings and move the ring gear away from the pinion gear. That's going to give us more backlash because we're looking from five to seven thousandths in backlash. Uh, so once I do that, I'm going to go ahead and retry it. All right, now I got about five thousandths in backlash. So it's time to blue the gear and see what our contact patch is. Now this picture is not my ring gear, but it describes a good contact patch. You see how it's in the center of the gear? Now this one is up on the top. If the gear is marking up on the top of the ring gear or down at the bottom or towards the outsides or insides of the face of the gear, that's not a good contact patch. All right, so once you do all that, you're ready to go. Just watch this video in reverse, put everything back in, put fluid in it, and it's ready to run. Thank you guys for watching, and uh, if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, please subscribe and uh, like this video. Thank you.